Time is quarter to four on November the 3rd. We are leaving Las Palmas in the Canary Islands, heading for Barbados. Steven on the helm, how are you feeling? Tired. Tired, he's been working hard. But good. But good. Honestly, the last couple of days have been really busy, but uh, we've got a lot done. So now we're just gonna try and trim these sails and get ourselves pointed in the right direction. Which way? South. North. Nah, it's kind of a westerly direction. Yeah, <laughs> I knew they were there somewhere. <laughs> Las Palmas. Right, we're having our first lunch on day two. And Stephen, what are we having? We're having open sandwiches of consisting of ham sausage and smashed avocados. Surprisingly tasty. Quick boat tour. So how are you sleeping, Stephen? Ah, really well. <laughs> Day three, and we've figured out the lee cloth. <laughs> and what else is happening? I can now use the cushion to purely hide my right <laughs> So this is the setup for downwind sailing that is known as goose swinging. We've got the spinnaker pole that traditionally holds out a spinnaker that goes across the front of the, the boat like this. Uh, but in this case, we've repurposed it to hold out permanently the large overlapping Genoa. And so it's held out on the port side with two guys. Uh, when the roll stops, I'll show you. An aft guy down here, a fore guy down here, and a topping lift up to the mast. And that holds this pole in exactly this position. Then we can sheet out using the regular jib sheets, the pole uh, and the jib, and it will all stay in a fixed position. As you can see there, it doesn't matter about the swell or the roll of the boat, that pole is fixed and has proven to be an excellent downwind uh, mode, which uh, as I say, gives us anywhere from sort of five and a half to to even up to eight knots, which is which is really impressive. A full mainsail uh, and a preventer down here, just to, just to keep again the main and the boom in a roughly fixed position as the boat sort of rolls around with the following sea. Also replaced uh, a part of the vang. This here was wire and it uh, had corroded and frayed on the first night in, in a bit of a unruly jibe. Uh, but I had some spare Dyneema and I put that on there now and that's, that's proved uh, very effective. But otherwise, I mean, the, the sailing is, is going exceptionally well. We've been blessed with uh, very little rain, very little cloud, which has allowed the solar panels to, to do good work. Um, there is excellent sailing conditions and there's also nobody out here. We haven't had, we had one ship go past yesterday, but apart from that, there is nobody on AIS and nobody around. So we are quite alone out here, but the boat is doing an excellent job at keeping us safe and Charles is doing a great job of keeping us on course.
quite a few gadgets and gizmos affixed to the to the push pit back here. So just as a quick tour of those, we've got the world's smallest outboard motor, which is reliable and gets us to shore a little bit faster than walking. Navtex is a text. Uh, it's almost like a SMS of weather that's broadcast via radio. Slightly older technology, but um, can be relied on in a pinch. Down below is the gas bottle holder for uh, currently the camping gas. And the reason that this is affixed to the uh, push pit is because it's unsafe to have a full gas bottle stored anywhere below decks that's not in a uh, airtight, gas tight uh, container. So it's safe out here for any leaks that might just go overboard. A couple of antenna, we have the GPS an AIS uh, mushroom here is providing AIS targets and our position to the AIS unit down below that broadcast our position to other boats. The Iridium uh, omnidirectional passive antenna is what I use to send very low speed uh, texts uh, and receive weather couple of times a day. Charles, Charles Vane, the Hydra Vane, is the self-steering uh, system on board. And what he does is he points towards the wind and any time that the boat deviates from its path, the wind will hit it on one side or the other side. And that pushing over turns set of gears down here that turn the tiller and an auxiliary rudder that we can see just down here. So it is making very small corrections that keep us with the wind always from that direction. Moving further around the flag staff with my flag from the Royal Ten Thames, that's the blue uh, ensign a life ring and a life raft, important safety, uh, and the fishing rod which is secured on this rail blazer rod holder that's proved really reliable. Uh, and we're still trying out different modes for fishing, different reels uh, and different lures, but we are finding a pretty good success with enough to sort of have a fish once a day if we, if we want it. Steven, let me grab the gap. <laughs> that is enormous. <laughs> <laughs> That's too big. Holy Christ. Okay, okay that's filming. Right, need to hurry. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All right, let go. <laughs> and then we just launch him back over the side. <laughs> nice. Because the way he starts kicking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, launch him. So it's the 11th of November, 2023, and we are approaching 11 a.m. Remembrance Day. And so out here in the mid-Atlantic, we have uh, a couple of shots of Kraken, uh, and one for my 
grandfather as well as those uh, who were lost at sea in the North Atlantic in conflicts past. Go for it now, go for it. All right. Go for it now or never. Cheers. Cheers. And over the side, in memory of my granddad and those other veterans for Remembrance Day. And the AIS alarm has gone off after many, many days of silence uh, because we're not alone out here. In the distance, at about two miles, is a French uh, racing boat and it is doing, according to the AIS, about 25 knots uh, and we have about 15 knots of breeze here so it is absolutely sending it. Paprika Rika, copy that. We've uh, been watching you come up. And uh, well done on the speed. Okay, okay. Uh, you go to uh, Martinique, uh, Guadeloupe, or. Uh... Yep, we're heading to Barbados for the run. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Uh, we are racing on the Transjagar uh, on the Imoca 60, so uh, have a nice trip to, uh, to the Caribbean Sea island and uh, see you. Copy that, Papua and uh, fair winds and good sailing. Thank you. Out. So we just caught a fish while the boat was going along at about seven knots. Quite the fighter. And here he is. Th that's the fish, that's Stephen. I'm a fish. What is he, Stephen? That is a Maui Maui, isn't it? A Maui Maui. Katsu fish. Katsu fish curry tonight. Katsu fish curry. How's the cooking process going? It's extreme. Um, a lot of holding on and a lot of spilling things, but otherwise enjoyable. There's just been a major incident on board Telemachus. The someone, me, has spilt. I was about to say, don't you dare implicate me in this. Spilt the rum. I've spilt the rum that we were just about to pour to celebrate our 150 miles in a day 
and turning westwards. And I've thrown the Captain Morgan all over the floor. Into the bilge. Into the bilge, which we're going to have to lift the lid on to clean. Uh, watch this space. Snow White doing the washing over here. R. <laughs> oh yes. That traditional. Snow, Snow, Snow White, White and her black beard. R. <laughs> so I've seen other people have cut their plastics into small strips and then shoved them into water uh, containers, and that stops having huge bags of uh, oversized plastic that we then need to store and dispose of. Can you show us the one from that we've done so far? Yeah. It's like a week's worth of rubbish in there. Yeah, that's a much more efficient way of storing it. So I will help Stephen out once I've done some sums for the navigation. So here we have Master Angler Ed. At the moment he's doing the classic tactic of I'm not strong enough to pull this one in, so I'm just gonna tow it for a bit. Hope he gets bored. Hey, I'm doing the uh, <laughs> I'm doing the cruiser's handbook of fishing. Approved technique. There's a beautiful sunset in the meantime. We can turn around and look at the oh, beautiful wow, sunset. Beautiful sunset. And we've got a Ed back here as well trying to bore a fish today. <laughs> <laughs> not not a conventional tactic. He simply waits until the fish has gone to sleep. And then gently reels it in. I always struggle getting this in. <laughs> Okay folks, here we have it. Ed has caught himself a lovely good sized bonito, which we are currently towing behind the boat. He's, uh, yeah, we need to do something. Let's get him in. Okay. There we are. Lovely big old bonito. Fantastic. And it's 11 o'clock on our last full day of the Atlantic crossing. And the weather is really laying on a terrific last day. Uh, we've had a hole of no wind for the last two days and run the engine, which has been a little frustrating, but, but something we've just had to do. Uh, but that has yielded to a really nice steady breeze from the east northeast, which we're riding goose winged once again and is propelling us really nicely towards Barbados at around at around six knots there. You can see up the top left. So we should we should get in in approximately 24 hours time at about uh, mid-morning and we'll be pulling into the southwestern edge of the island, the capital of Bridgetown, and the Bridgetown Yacht Club is in here, so we'll, we'll anchor somewhere around here. But first we have to skirt 
a little south of some shoals here which the chart tells us and the pilot books tell us can create turbulency so we're going to give that a wide berth but uh, it's very exciting to see how far we've come from the Canary Islands down to the Caribbean and we really are so close you can see is a seven knots there we've had a really good average even a max of, of 8.7 knots so just a, a fantastic last day Morning of the 25th of November, day 22 of our Atlantic crossing and it's beautiful sailing as we have 8 miles into Barbados.